Up until now, the videos that you've watched were ones before my dad passed away. This video, I was in the middle of filming when I heard that my father passed away. And so this video, I'm not going to show the ending of my meal simply because the news hit me very hard. I was unable to finish this video. I'm sharing with you my videos in sequence so you can understand the timeline of my life from now on. and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to make a really quick crock pot meal. It's something my family loves. My grandchildren love it. It's sure to please everyone in your family. It's about five ingredients. You can change the chicken to turkey. It's almost like having Thanksgiving in a crock pot. So I use the favorite cookbook of all times and this is the big cookbook. This is the fix it and forget it and this is all of her cookbooks all in one really reasonable if you buy it used and this here is the number one cookbook that I use it's so simple and so easy it's one dish chicken supper but I'm adding a twist to it I don't know if you guys remember that I made a video on cracked chicken I did a whole series on cracked chicken everybody loved it I'm going to add one additional ingredient in this I'm adding cream cheese to it to make it a little more richer to give it a little more flavor I'm gonna tell you what it calls for four boneless chicken breasts, one can of cream chicken soup or cream of celery, whatever you have. I have cream of mushroom. It calls for one half cup of milk. I'm going to omit the milk and add cream cheese. And then it calls for one box of stove top stuffing. That's it everybody and it is amazing. All right, so let's get working on the meal. Mm, it's gonna be great. The recipe only takes a couple minutes to make. We have four chicken breasts. Now you don't need to have so many. I had these thawed out and need to get them used up. And to that we're going to add a block of cream cheese. Now this is not in the original recipe, but I'm adding it. Then it calls for cream of mushroom soup. And then one box of stuffing mix. And there you go everyone. That is the meal. You want to have a vegetable with it. I'll probably have green beans. So we're going to put this in the crock pot for high for about four hours or six to eight hours. That's done. Now on to more work I have to do in my kitchen. Those in the crock pot, the next thing I need to work on is pomegranate. You never know with working in a food pantry what you're going to come home with. All of these were expired actually two days prior and so they couldn't hold them for the next week. What am I going to do with them? Well, I looked on the internet because this is something new for me and I don't like wasting anything. We are going to dehydrate the pomegranate seeds and then I'm going to use the juice to make ham glaze, to can. So I realized by looking on the internet, pomegranate, you can use it so many ways. And the juice of the pomegranate, you can actually make a jelly, which you can put it with meatballs, you can put it on as a glaze for meatloaf, you can put it as a glaze for ham. And that's something that's gonna be really useful for me here in the homestead. So let me show you what I'm gonna do because we're gonna follow along with this together because I've never done this before. These containers are great for starting seeds. So this whole container and everything, none of it is going to get wasted. And that's how you turn nothing into something. You take everything, you don't throw anything away, and you find a use for it. We're going to go ahead. We're going to drain them. Now, I don't know how much juice this is going to give me. I hope it gives me enough to make the jelly. We're going to give it a try. And we're going to see.
crock pot. It's going to take about four hours. We're going to put these in the dehydrator. We're going to let all the juice drain and strain. And then we're going to make our ham glaze and jelly. We're going to put everything together. And I'll show you at the end what everything looks like. You know, it's so amazing how the power of the internet, you can research anything you wish. You can read it so fascinating that you can just go on the internet, type in a kind of food and how you want to preserve it. And so many wonderful recipes come up. I can't wait to make the ham glaze using this jelly. And I think that it's going to be a perfect combination. Pomegranate, jelly, ham glaze. Yummy. It sounds so good. And I can't wait to see what these look like dehydrated. I've seen on the internet that they get really, really little and they get really hard and it's going to be perfect for making a powder or smoothies, desserts, or whatever you wish you can use it for that calls for pomegranate. Let me clean up my kitchen and I'll get back to you in just a moment. So that was the end of the video. I was going to go on to show you how I canned the amazing sauce for my meatloaf and the glaze for ham. I was going to show you my amazing meal afterwards, but hubby came home and gave me the news that my father passed away, and so I never quite finished this video. You know, you never know what tomorrow will bring, and I always tell you that, and you just never know what journey your life will take you on. This is the last of the videos that I have made before the death of my father, and I'm going to share with you my journey from here on forward. But the meal was good and delicious, except for it didn't really taste that good to all of us because of the sadness and the shock of hearing of my dad's death. The first day, it really didn't seem that a shock to me until the next day it really set in that no longer are my parents on this earth. In fact, I feel somewhat like an orphan. A lot of you feel that way. Most of us have dealt with death in our life at some point or another. If you never experienced death in your family, find yourself very grateful because it is something that is very traumatic, tragic, and it's something that changes you. You know the doctors say that when death hits a person, a loved one, that the family members, it actually changes their brain. It changes the way of their brain function when they have a death in the family. I believe that with my whole heart. I believe our brains are wired in such a way that when there is a shock like that, I believe that our brains are changed. Well, everyone, here is the beginning of our new journey, and I'm going to take you with me. Thank you so much for watching all of my videos, and thank you so much for your love and your dedication and your support and your kindness to me. Here's to better days ahead.